Hi, Todd. Um, uh, thanks so very much for being with us today at Shenango Presbytery. Um, I just want you to start by um, telling everybody who you are, because you may not be a familiar name or face. Well, probably probably not familiar. I've just been a pastor and a seminary professor. Um, 27 years, I pastored Presbyterian congregations. Um, spent the first 10 years at Hollywood Presbyterian Church in Los Angeles, and then which, which is where I went to school and uh, was was uh, under care and got ordained. And then 17 years at San Clemente Presbyterian, and then the last um, 10 years I've been at Fuller Seminary first as a senior administrator and now as a professor. And I run an institute, and I got my own little consulting and coaching and speaking gig that I do, my own company. So that's what I do. I I basically wake up every single day. Uh, Beth, getting to work with leaders, helping faith leaders thrive as change leaders, and it's a, a great, great gift. Well, and so that's my next question, Todd. How did how did you go from being a pastor to being someone who's helping other leaders figure out how to lead? Right? How did yeah. that come about? Well, early, early on in my ministry. So when I was twenty three, and I went to um, Hollywood Presbyterian, so Lloyd when you were a baby, right? Yeah, I was a baby. I mean, I was a twenty three, and they asked me to be on their in their staff as a, as the pastor for the college students. Lloyd Ogilvy was my pastor, and he literally said, "Todd, I believe that you are called to train up the leaders for the next generation of the church," and it became like this really powerful call on my life. So that all throughout my ministry, whenever I was pastoring or teaching, I was always doing leadership formation, just leadership development. I love working with the session. I love working with my staff. I loved developing leaders. I got a PhD so I could teach at the seminary on the side. So it always was part of what I did. And um, and then eventually I ended up doing this consulting thing because I started working with our presbytery and then I did some stuff in the denomination, all in leading change. And what I realized was you had to form people to be able to take people through change. And so that's now what I do all the time. And I had a decision to make about three years ago about whether or not I wanted to do some other kind of more senior administration in the seminaries. And I really felt this deep sense that my life was to be about supporting and leaders and forming leaders for change. Yeah. And so why why is it important for us to be formed? What what is so important about this work that um that you've literally given your life to it and you're flying out to see us? Yeah. Why? So it's two things really. One is we live in a dramatically changed world. And for those of us who were trained by institutions and seminaries and like I'm part of and others, we were trained for a Christendom world that was more stable. So the disruption means that the places of our development as leaders is really is that has been more disrupted has been around leadership development. Like we like somebody said, seminary didn't prepare me for the world I'm in today. And that became for me, that would be like if Lloyd's thing was one, this became the other voice. You know, seminary really didn't prepare me for the world I'm in today. And so I really do believe that leadership formation is really important, that it's about the way in which God is continually at work forming us to be able to take people through change change in a healthy way. And that my definition of leadership is energizing your own people toward their own transformation to accomplish a mission. And so that that's at the center of all that we do. So it really is. It's I would say my life is the intersection of spiritual formation and organizational leadership change. And I live in that intersection. Okay. Yeah. Um, you and I have joked. Um, I read your book probably four or five years ago. Actually, my daughter's about to turn five, so probably six years ago. Um, right. And I didn't know how to do what you were talking about. And so I wanted right. to learn more. And so I Googled you because Google's great. And mm -hmm. I found that you were leading a program at Fuller and you and I started communicating and I ended up entering the program. And I we've joked because it was my technical solution. It was my, how do I fix what I don't know how to do? And you're right. not going to give us a program. You're not going to say, follow these five simple steps and everything will be fine. And so um, what should people expect when they, yeah. when they come either to the, the all, all leaders, deacons, elders, Sunday school teachers, all, all of our leaders, as well as the pastors, what, what should they expect um, yeah. to learn how to grow, to hear um, in yeah. that time? Well, what we're going to do with all the leaders together on Sunday afternoon is we're going to do a set of material that I do in a lot of places called How Not to Waste a Crisis. And what it really is about is that when we hit crises or inflection points, 
or disruption. It's actually a moment to develop our capacity to lead better. And so what we'll talk about are the practices and principles of adaptive change and about the way in which we can learn to become leaders who can actually faithfully navigate change, holding on to what's the most important and being prepared to learn and let go of what we need to. And, and what we've discovered is what's really hard for most people is that dynamic. What do you preserve? What do you let go? How do you take people through the necessary letting go to move forward? And that's what we'll do on Sunday. And then on uh, when I get the pastors all together at the retreat, we're going to talk about sabotage and resilience. <laughs> because what happens when you start leading people through change is they resist you. And that's really hard. And we'll talk about that a little bit on Sunday. But really, when we got the pastors together, we'll have a longer time where we can actually talk about how internal resistance is for most pastors the most soul-sucking thing they face. Um, there we're we're up for the dramatically changed world and even the crises of the world. It's hard when we feel like we are hitting resistance. Sometimes we don't act as maturely as we need to. Sometimes we don't respond in the way that we need to. So we're going to talk about that as well. So that's what we'll do. And you'll uh, you'll um, define adaptive change when we are together <laughs> because I'm guessing that that might be new, like it was for me. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The biggest part, the biggest part we're going to deal with is in the first day, we're going to talk about what do you do when you don't have best practices? That's what adaptive changes. When you're not an expert, when the old programs don't work, when you have to lead and you don't know where you're going and then how you actually lead people through that process. And then when we get with the pastors, we'll talk about, and then when you start doing that and people resist you, how do you actually keep taking them through that? So that's what we'll do. Perfect. Well, thank you yeah. so very much for your time. Blessings. And we'll yeah. see you soon. I look forward to it. It'll be fun. Sounds great. <laughs>